What is going on everyone? My name is Jaybear, and as someone who usually gets hyped for many, many new releases that come out every single month, I decided I wanted to show off a couple of the games that I thought were more interesting, and maybe they fit in the more quirky or niche fitting titles, and I will be breaking the videos up by which month the games release in. Now they won't always be the most anticipated games, or the biggest ones, but sometimes they will, and hopefully we can share some of the same interest of games for the videos in which I release. Nonetheless, starting off with July, and it's kind of a rather quiet month for the releases, but here are 5 interesting games coming out in July of 2016. With number 5, we have Heroes of Incredible Tales. Now, this is a mobile hack and slash action RPG that will be running on the incredible intense Unreal Engine 4 engine of course. Now this game doesn't only have wonderful dazzling graphics, but it will also feature a very very long single player along with a cooperative mode and a online multiplayer mode. This game to me looks very very interesting as it's not only a normal typical mobile game that will focus on just one type of gameplay, but it also delivers a full experience for those who maybe want to enjoy just the campaign in which there's 200 levels of those, or you maybe you want to kick it online and just smash some faces in. Now you can tell that the gameplay is really all up in your face, and the game has four different playable classes to choose from, starting with a swordsman to an assassin, a dual wielding fighter, and a mage in which all of them you are able to upgrade a, all your skills through a tree system that can maximize your character's potential. Recently I've heard it's gone rather crazy in South Korea, quickly maxing over 5 million downloads and it is available to download for free on both Android and iOS since July 7th of obviously 2016. Now if you're not much of a Pokemon Go fan, then maybe this one might bite your taste. And number 4 we have Inside. This was released on July 7th and it is the long anticipated puzzle platformer that is the follow up to Limbo from the studio of Play Dead. So right off the bat, if you're a fan of Limbo, for just $19.99 this game will surely catch your attention. The game continuously throws weird and kinda strange twists with a rather constant underlying narrative and themes that are heavily influenced by science and obviously one's own exploration of the mind. As many words as I wish I could use to describe how wonderful this game is and how wonderful it looks, the game actually uses less and by less I mean that there actually are no words spoken, no cutscenes, no audio logs, and really there's no context for the player, but I feel like that's kind of the best part. It makes the player really enjoy the surrounding environment and grasp them into constantly being on the lookout for things throughout the game. Take a step into the dreary heart of darkness and you'll probably leave with more questions than what you probably had started with. It's no doubt a great recommendation from myself and I'm sure a lot others. Even if you're slightly interested, I would definitely check it out. Coming in at number 3, we have Abduction. Now this will be releasing on July 26th and it is another very long awaited game. This is the spiritual successor to Myst, who uh, if you don't know what Myst was, it's from Scion Worlds and it looks extremely beautiful and it is a mysterious oriented game that actually received over 1.3 million dollars in funding from its Kickstarter campaign and without question, this looks totally worth it for every penny that you can spend. Taking place in a mining town that is called Hunrath, the game is built with puzzles, mazes, and amazing story building that lets the player dive right into it right away. For someone who hasn't maybe played Myst and isn't familiar with Scion's love for locked doors and secrets, then you may need to know that the game is a puzzle magnet. It is honestly why I think it will surely not disappoint. It's beautiful on the eyes and I'm sure you won't be disappointed with your expectations for this game. Now a stranger is kind of put into this game as the player, in an environment you kind of beg to figure out the puzzles as you go. So really looking at the gameplay, could it get more enticing than that? Not too sure. Definitely check this one out once it releases. At number 2 we have We Happy Few. This one is also releasing on July 26th, and it is a psychological thriller survival game that by the looks and the gameplay showing off, you can easily tell that this game will fuck with your mind right away. You will have to use your stealth skills 
ability to conform, and ultimately your survival tactics in an order to escape this delusional world of which is Wellington Wells. The art style is very similar to the likes of Bioshock Infinite, yet it's set in a 1964 England city filled with lunatic citizens. And as the story develops, you will learn about the tragic events of the city and how it was able to turn into this creepily happily community. I shouldn't forget to mention that if you do die, that's it. You will load into a new procedurally generated city, still the same name and the same community, but this is the, how the game is supposed to be played. It's for playability and learning how to survive in Wellington Wells. This game is absolutely insane. It has great graphics and definitely it's different with the type of gameplay that it is. So I highly recommend checking this one out once it drops on the 26th of July. With our last one, we are looking at I Am Setsuna. Coming out on July 19th from Square Enix, it is inspired by the classic Chrono Trigger and it does introduce a rather authentic Japanese RPG style. The story is filled with a emotionally impactful yet rather memorable one that portrays sorrow throughout the storyline as the main character who is Setsuna is chosen to sacrifice herself because of the powers that she holds. The game really invokes nostalgia onto the players. It really really does bring back wonderful elements of what Japanese role-playing action games are all about. The game has tons of interesting characters that Setsuna brings on her destiny to save her village or her kingdom, but is kind of met with a slightly big problem on the way with all the other struggles that she meets on her sacrificial pilgrimage. I for one will be enjoying the game the minute it drops because it truly looks wonderful and I love stories, so the story really entices me enough to where I want to buy it just for the story. All fans of Japanese RPGs should be on the lookout for this one if you're not already, even fans of RPGs in general with great stories should also be on the lookout because I'm sure this one alone will not be disappointing. Alright, well that's going to do it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the list. Now I hopefully we can uh, share some interest like I said in the beginning of the games that I chose. These are of course not the best ones or the biggest ones that are coming out but these are the ones that I find that are the most interesting with all the gameplay aspects and stuff like that. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys are looking out for uh, in the release for games in July. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.